What is going on guys DBG here and today we are going to be talking about the best two guards in NBA 2k21 my team lads. So we are going to be obviously it's only going to be primary two guards we are not um, talking about secondary two guards. Um, so it's it's only only guys that are at our primary position again just to keep uh, Keep all of this easier Just to keep just kind of everything a lot easier with in terms of these lists It just means that I'm not putting the same player on two lists and for example if I wanted to put Jimmy Butler as a two guard having people complaining saying oh I run him at small forward Why is Jimmy Butler not in the small forward list? It's easier to go primary But anyway, this position is stacked and there are a lot of honorable mentions so, guys in my honorable mentions. First of all, if any of these guys are in your top 10, that is perfectly, perfectly fine. But we have J.R. Smith, who was very, very close to making the list. Pete Maravich, a god on next gen, not it on current gen. J.R. Smith, a little better on current gen, but also a little bit worse on next gen. We had Tracy, no, T-Max. Well, obviously T-Max there. Jordan didn't quite make the list. Jordan, again, a lot of people like him. I don't. RJ Barrett didn't make the list. Jamal Crawford is, to me, one of the most underrated of all the Spotlight Sim players. I'm probably going to make that video later today of the, the most underrated ones. As people are not talking about. Larry Hughes was so close. Say not Larry Hughes. My, Larry Hughes was not close to making it. Michael Red was so close to making it. Calbert Chaney, some people could argue. Some people argue Jalen Brown. Another player that a lot of people are going to argue should make, should make it is just a player that I haven't had as much success with, and it's Manu Ginobili. Personally, I prefer Crawford to Ginobili, and there's another one of these guys that runs the one that's even better, but Ginobili, I actually really do like him at the two as a spot-up shooter, but there's other guys that I like a little bit more. Chris Morris is pretty decent. Eddie Johnson's great on next gen. Cooper's good. Both gens. Like, again, this position is absolutely stacked. Like... Um, I'm pretty sure Havlicek, again, is a two-guard. Mikhail Bridges is incredible. Just as a, for a 5K card, I'll probably make a video on him later. 95 speed, 95 acceleration, 94 three ball, 90 jab, 98 lateral queens, and 13 half defensive badges. I'm a base 80 and half blinders. Lads, well, this position stacked. That's all I'm going to say is this position is stacked. Any of those guys can be in your top 10. But at number 10, we're going KPJ. Why do I have Kevin Porter Jr. over J.R. Smith? Don't, like, don't ask me why. In terms of stats and badges wise, it should be almost identical. I think J.R. is even a little bit better than KPJ. But there's just something about Kevin Porter Jr. that makes him better. And again, you you see it anytime most people use the Ruby. Anytime I see KPJ, I'm like, if I leave him open, someone's going to green with him. It's J.R. base, but it's better than J.R. I don't know why. Like, I can't, I don't green that well J.R. base. With J.R. Smith, but I green everything with Kevin Porter Jr. Is it placebo? Probably, but still. Again, nearly perfect stats-wise, fantastic badges-wise, half showtime, half range, half blinders. Man, him at that point guard position, or heck, even him at the two where he's equally as good. One of the best players, especially on next gen. Kevin Porter Jr. is going in here at number 10. And number 9, Steven Jackson. Give this guy gold showtime if you're on current gen. I mean, you don't even need gold showtime if you're on next gen. He's like six foot eight, um, or J Barrett. That's basically what you are getting with Steven Jackson. He's got 94 speed, 94 acceleration, 92 three ball, 95 driving, 92 lateral, 92 steal. He's also got decent rebounding, good speed with ball. And he's got Rudy base on very quick, bad behind the back, but he's got really great, um, obviously, you can curry his uh just overall movement is really really good and the thing is is like if you're looking for a cone do i prefer this guy over like a jimmy yeah i do it's just again from my experience do i prefer him over for example i will say is i prefer mikhail bridges to stephen jackson but mikhail bridges is not good on current gen at all like base 80 is only a good next gen release and um blinders kind of ruins the card on current gen Whereas Steven Jackson's really, really good on both ends. He's, again, really tall, gets boards, plays really good defense. And for me, is a no-brainer. No-brainer in this top 10 list. At number 8, we got Kawhi Leonard. 
and I know someone is gonna go crazy. Just because someone people can be really comfortable with a card does not make them one of the best. The whole thing about cards in game is I will always say this if you play better with a player and that I have 10 and a player that I have a number one, it doesn't mean the guy at number 10 is better, it just means better like it's just a better card. It means it's better for you. Use whatever cards you feel comfortable with. For example, again, I don't like James Worthy. I prefer using Bam out of Bio. Is James Worthy better than Bam out of is Bam and Bio better than James Wordy? Of course not. It is just what I like to run. And that's the thing. Sometimes cards that aren't great, you can have a lot of success with. And Kawhi is okay. Like, he's got great lateral queens, great speed, great acceleration. His defense is pretty good. And he gets really good defensive animations. Half showtime. He's got half steady slash blinders. Problem is, if you're looking on next gen, he can't really move. Like, the Kawhi Leonard dribble style pushes that speed down to like 80-something when he has the ball in his hand. He's only got Ray Allen on quick. And in a land of releases on very quick, it's a fine, but not like top, top tier release. And he's just a cone. He's just a cone. Like, if you're asking me who would I prefer, Kawhi Leonard or Steven Jackson, Kawhi by a little bit. Like, he has the problem of the Hall of Fame steady if you're on current gen. So if you're shooting, if you don't green base every shot with him, you're going to really struggle to shoot with him. But it is one thing. On current gen, he gets the Kawhi defensive stance, which is really, really good. He does beat people up on defense, but I will say on next gen, that doesn't really matter too much. Like again, on next gen, defense is more about the player, the individual player, as in like you personally, the player, rather than how your video game, in-game players um, animations are, which is what the case is a lot more on current gen. So... He has flaws. There are flaws to this card on both gens. So I, I got to put him in number eight. Then at number seven, we got Damar DeRozan. In my opinion, Trey Burke on quick. It's as good as Ray Allen on quick. It's not... They're, it's tough one to say that it's like better, but they're both unbelievable releases. Half range extender. He's got a bunch of half defensive badges. Six foot seven with a six nine wingspan. 94 speed, 94 acceleration, 95 three ball, 99 mid range, 93 lock wings, 98 driving dunk. He can curry. He's got shifty dribble style. Pro one behind the back. So obviously movement good. Release really good. Defense really good. Overall great card. And number six. People are going to complain about this. But it's my list. Tyreek Evans. Tyreek Evans. He's my favorite. Of all the spotlight sim cards. He's my number one. Uh, sorry. Outside of Bill Russell. Bill Russell's the best. Bill Russell's the best. Let's just forget. Like, it goes for me. Bill Russell... Tyreek Evans, Bam Adebayo. They are my number one, two, and three in these uh, spotlight sims. And then maybe like Steven Jackson or something. But still, 97 speed, 97 acceleration. Look, 88 three ball. But if you have like a D'Antoni, or you even have a Frank Vogel, he's got, <laughs> he's got floor general Hall of Fame. So if you've got a two guard with Hall of Fame floor general, you've got Frank Vogel, that's plus seven. That pushes him to, up to a 95 three ball. You even put a plus three three point shoot, which doesn't cost that much onto him. You've got a 98 three ball. So that 88 can very, very cheaply, it can very easily be pushed up to um, 98. That 88 plus 10 is almost nothing for three ball. Any of so many other stats are tough to get up, like ball handle, but three pointer, I'm telling you, is so easy to get bumped up. Like. He's, he's one of my favorite shooters in the game. He's at 97 speed, 97 acceleration, 90 driving dunk. 6'6 six, six with almost max wingspan. 6'11. Actually, no. 6'11 is not almost max wingspan. It looks like max wingspan in game, though. Super, super long wingspan. He's got 85 strength for a point guard. 93 lateral. He's got a bunch of good defensive badges. If you're looking at his badges, a clutch shooter, dead eye, he doesn't have. Yeah, they are, kind of do matter. Especially um, dead eye. But, again, it's kind of expensive. It's doesn't really make much of a difference to me. Dude's got half blinders, half range extender. And he's also got the pro three behind the back. Quick dribble style, which I prefer to shifty. The best moving cross in the game. He's also got the pro two escape, which is the curry. He's got very Kobe Bryant release on very, very, on very quick, which again is a super nice release. And all around just an incredible, incredible card in my team. So Tyreek Evans get in here at number six at number five 
we got Tracy McGrady. T Mac versus DeRozan. It's a close one. So, like, some people prefer DeRozan because DeRozan doesn't have steady, but again, half steady becomes half blinders. But, like, stats wise, T Mac is better. Again, he's got perfect stats. Like, 70 a post doesn't matter. Shot IQ doesn't matter. Of everything that matters, Tracy McGrady's got perfect stats. Defensively, his badges are okay. He's got every shooting badge, at least on gold. And he's got Trey Burke base on quick. He's also got pro to escape, pro one behind the back. Tracy McGrady's signature size up, which I don't know how great that is because I don't really use it too much. But he's also 6'8 with a 7'2 wingspan, so he's got a length advantage over a DeMar DeRozan. So for me, Tracy McGrady has to go in here at number 5 on this list. At number 4, James Harden. I mean, he's not, he's invincible, isn't he? He's invincible. Like, that has to count for something. He's got basically every Hall of Fame badge that's needed. He, he's actually missing more badges than some new some new cards, like. But Harden release on very quick, which is good. Great behind the back. Great. He's can curry. He's also a great dunker. He can play the point guard position. He's got a long wingspan. I'm not that high on Harden. I really am not that high on Harden in general, but I mean. He's not worth a million MT, but he's good. He's really, really good, lads. At number three, I'm going Vince Carter. Vince Carter, again, is he worth grinding level 40 for? No. But is he great? Yes. This release, I've tried to green with it. Vince, I'm very quick. He's one of the, it's not the fastest release, but it's one of the easiest ones to green. Pro 3 behind the back, Pro 2 escape, quick dribble style. Again, may as well have 99 every single stat. He's got 47 half badges, which at this stage of the game, you know what? That's not a lot. But at the end of the day, look at the badges he doesn't have. There is no key badge he doesn't have, at least on gold. There's not. Every single badge he has on gold. And if you're looking for um, the actual key badges, the ones that you really, really want to play, he's got them all in Hall of Fame. Especially for a two guard. Yeah, maybe you want to give him box. Because that kind of does help. Maybe you want to give him bronze rim protector. Other than that, you're not going to notice anything if he had. Like if they bumped him up to 60 Hall of Fame badges. Say if they bumped up all of these 12 gold badges to Hall of Fames. You wouldn't even notice. He's only got 59 total badges. But like, pump fake might show relevant. Pick and popper, does not matter. Deep face, doesn't matter. Back down punch for two guard, doesn't matter. Deep hooks, doesn't matter. Drop step, doesn't matter. Pick and roller, does not matter. Post spin technician, you know what? Actually, I would want to give him that. Dream shake, doesn't matter. So, people are going to point out, oh, he's only got 59 total badges. None of the badges, apart from like post spin technician and maybe like box that he doesn't have, even matter. So, I love this card. I'm going to get him eventually. It'll, it might take a while, it might be the last day of the season, but I'm going to get him. <laughs> anyway, now on to number two Ray Allen. Ray Allen. Again, you're looking at his stats and you're like, these are near perfect. He's got half blinders and the Ray Allen base. He's only 6'5 with a 6'8 wingspan. He is the most dangerous player on next gen. Ray Allen on very quick half blinders. Pro 2, not the best uh, behind the back. He is the most dangerous three hunter on next gen. He's not even close. He is a guy that I would heavily, heavily consider bringing into my team. When he drop, when he eventually, it's not if he drops under 100k, it's a when he drops under 100k. Like I reckon, if I put in Wiseman and Ray Allen into my team now, I'm good for the rest of the year. Like, I don't even need, I don't even need them because I've still got like Pokashevsky, but Ray Allen, lads, I'm telling you, if you are, on, if you're on current gen, he's all right. If you're on current gen, he's all right. If you are on next gen, this is the most dangerous player in the game. He's basically like taller. Pete Maravich, but he's got his release on very quick and he dunks better and moves better and everything's better. God dear. God dear card. But at number one, although I will say Ray Allen is better than this guy on next gen unless you put blinders on him, Kobe. 6 6 6 11 wingspan. So it's the exact same as Tyreek Evans. I was about to say, did they just make Tyreek Evans and Kobe like basically clones of each other? Did they? Pro 2, Pro 2, Pro 8, Pro 3. No, slightly different. Either way, he's got Kobe on very quick as well. He is like a better, or better Tyreek Evans. 
He's a 60 Hall of Fame badge, 99 every stat Tyree Gevins. He's incredible. I'm indifferent on Kobe on quick in that release. I like it, don't love it. His defense is... Look, it's mediocre. But... I'm telling you. Dude, it's every hot, every hot badge of managers except blinders. So unbelievable on current gen. And then, if you had a hot blinders badge, you paid for that token market update for the hot blinders badge. He was absolutely incredible. He would be absolutely... He was absolutely incredible, incredible for that. So... Um, or he will be incredible with that badge. Is he worth 4 million MT? Obviously not. Obviously not. Is he significantly better than Ray Allen on current gen? I mean, yeah, but on next gen, I might take Ray Allen over him. You could argue Vince is close to him on current gen. You could argue Ray Allen is better than him on next gen. Heck, you, he's one of the worst value cards in the game. Doesn't mean he's not the best tier guy in the game. So now that's the video. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.